Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Qualitative Research. Today, we are going to have a little field trip about how to make qualitative claims. And there are two concepts that I want to review. One is the idea of abductive reasoning, which is basically the logic of guessing. And the second is negative case analysis. And uh, to assist me in demonstrating these ideas is Kristen Fote, claim maker extraordinaire. So. As a, I've never made a claim before. She makes claims all the time. <laughs> All people make claims. Actually, claim making is essential to knowledge production. We all do it. Um, and so um, we were on um, a quarantine style walk uh, today, just trying to get something that is different from the humdrum of life. Post industrial space is empty. So the post industrial space down by the river is empty. And so here we are uh, enjoying our walk along the bike path um, when I discovered that uh, there's a bunch of trash all around the bike path. So I'll show you a little. Um, there's a bit of trash. There's a bit of trash. Oh look, there's all, all of that trash all around. So um, Kristen and I are going to engage in some claim making behaviors uh, to help account for why there's all of this trash. So with abductive reasoning, the first step is to identify or highlight the surprising fact. There's more trash here than there was anywhere else. And so the question is, why? why? So I'm gonna posit the first possible explanation. Um, possible explanation. Uh, people throw trash here from the bike path. So there's more, more, more people biking. So then the second step, so first step is identify the, the surprising fact. The second step is name a thing that would make the surprising fact a matter of course. The third step is to explain how your conjectured claim explains the surprising fact. So my conjectured claim is people throw stuff from the bike path um, and that's why there's all this trash here because people don't want to carry their trash um, with them as they bike. So then step four uh, is to look for further support. Um, so can we find further support that um, it's from the bikers? I mean, there's the path right over there, so maybe that's the support. However, um, the kind of like fifth part is a thing called negative case analysis, which is to kind of flip the claim um, and look for evidence that supports that it's not true. So Kristen, yes. can you identify any anything to um, give evidence to the counter case that this trash is not from bikers? Um, I mean, there's a decent amount of trash that I don't think would come from bikers. I mean, like what? anything could probably be argued. Plastic bottles and stuff, yeah, but like, I don't know. Here's like a glasses case. It's possible. Over there, I saw like a, a wrapper that usually like a vegetable would be, would be wrapped in. There's okay. a lot of alcohol. I don't know how much bikers drink wilder. I mean, walkers might. Yeah, okay. I don't know. So the, the, the trash profile does not match the trash profile of users of the path. No, probably not. Okay, good. So we're gonna, um, for the sake of uh, exploration, we're gonna hang the idea that it comes from the bike path. I have an idea though. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so show them where we are. Mm -hmm. Can you, here, make, should we show, well anyway, we're under the Stan Musial Memorial Bridge. Bridge, okay. So that's the there's one a bridge. that's got the cool, it's a newer bridge. Anyway, me, well, I mean, obviously the spot that we are right now, but I mean, could people just be like chucking the trash off the highway? Sure. So there's a bunch of cars up there, uh, and maybe people are throwing their trash off of the highway. It's like a bag that looked like it had some food in it. Somebody could have like thrown that off the highway. Okay. So conjecture how uh, the claim supports the surprising fact. We've got this idea that there's a bunch of trash because people are throwing things out of their car. This is the United States. People love to throw stuff out of their cars. Um, okay. So um, look for more support or the counter case. Um, what, what counterfactuals? Well, I, I hope not that many people are drinking and driving. 
Okay, so there's still a lot of, I see like three Bud Light cans just for where I'm at. I'm at. Oh, there's also more like hard liquor crushed things than the one you picked up. Okay, okay, so hope, but that's, um, they're, drinking and driving is a real thing, so. Oh, this is some live bait, a, bat, a live bait tag. So that well, probably didn't that come from a car. Probably Somebody didn't come from a car. Fishing. That probably came from people fishing. Um, yeah, okay, so. We, we hope that this trash isn't all coming from cars, um, but what, what evidence is there that it doesn't come from the cars? Well, I would say that um, the fact that there's just as much trash underneath the interstate as opposed to the sides of the interstate makes that less explanatory. Okay. Because if it were just along, if there were like... Whoa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm crazy with the phone. I'm trying um, to get him to calm down for you guys. Um, yeah, but if, um, if it were just coming from the interstate, there would be a line of it, right? right yeah, here. maybe, because the wind was blowing and stuff. I was talking about the hard alcohol and things hopefully being yeah, negative but hopefully cases. Hopefully, okay. people could still be doing it. Although, that's a piece of a, like a bookcase. So, that probably didn't get thrown out of the car. Could have blown off a car. Could have blown off a car. All right, all right. So, we've got What's some next? some support. Um, but some countervailing support that it came from the interstate. I don't know. What's your next Me? conjecture? Yeah. I mean, well, well, you and I talked about this, and we pretty much are fairly certain that most of it just comes from the river. Okay. a lot of trash comes down the river, and we're under the bridge here, and there's trees and other little things that it's just going to get hung up on, so... So you think the trash comes from the river? Yeah, probably. So it's higher than the river. So how's that work? Well, the river is often higher. Okay, all right. And then it goes down so, and it leaves trash on the side. Okay, so that's the explanation for how the conjecture claim accounts for the surprising fact that changing levels abandons trash uh, up, up, upstream. Or uh, up bank, is that the word? Okay, sure. anyway. So let's look for support. Um, or negative support. Probably not as much trash on the other side of the club wall, but I don't know if we're gonna walk oh, over there. No, 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 we can check. Oh, we no, can so check. No, I can run with them, it's fine. Okay, so Kristen has asked, is there as much trash on the other side of the flood wall? And the answer is absolutely not. So there's a very significant less trash on the other side of the flood wall. So that's strong evidence. Um, because you take away the variable, namely river, and you take away the uh, dependent variable, namely the trash. Um, I would also say that the trash is mostly floating trash. Bottles, wooden pieces. So that's stuff that's gonna rise when the river rises um, and fall and, you know, land on the, land on the, uh, Say that again? The trash is literally caught on the branches. Oh, yeah. Trash uh, over here, literally caught on the branches of the trees. Probably not uh, a thing that happens because people are throwing, fr throwing their shit from the interstate, but rather the river, uh, this like, um, yeah, filtering the river as the trash flowed past. Um, also, we've got some evidence of like uh, river trash covered in silt. So, so we think that um, it's the river because of abductive reasoning and negative case analysis.